How does an everyday casual user who wants great performance pick between these two desktops? The Mac Mini has been one of my favorite devices. It's small, it's powerful, and I think it represents an outstanding value. But then Apple released the iMac, and while it starts at almost twice the cost of the Mac Mini, has the same M1 chip, a beautiful display, excellent built-in speakers, an integrated webcam, and it comes in some fun colors. Not the matte black that I wanted, but I do like the blue that you voted for. We have two completely different approaches to desktop design with similar processing power. So how do you choose which one is a better value and which one would be the best fit for your needs? Let's start out by considering the design and form factor. So the Mac mini is, well, you know, a mini desktop. It's only 7.7 .7 by 7.7 .7 inches, which ends up being 19.7 by 19.7 centimeters, and the height is 1.4 inches or 3.6 centimeters. Even with this very small footprint, it still loses out to the all-in-one iMac because it only requires a 5.8 by 5.2 inches footprint for the stand. Now with my Mac mini setup, I chose to use a desk mount for my monitor so I can save up even more desktop real estate. And you can also find vertical mounts for the Mac mini if you're really tight on space. In either case, these should both fit on very small desks. But if you want the smallest footprint right out of the box, that would be the iMac. Now next, let's talk about the display. So obviously the Mac mini doesn't come with one. So unless you already have one from a previous setup, you'll need to buy one. Now this could be looked at as both a pro or a con, so I'll get back to that in just a minute. Now the iMac comes with a beautiful 4.5K display, so you can now watch your favorite content in 4K and it's gonna look great. The image quality on it is excellent, it's bright, it's crisp, and it's color accurate, so you can definitely use it for photo and video editing. I do wanna point out that it's quite a reflective display, so keep that in mind when you consider placement. Now, as I mentioned, the integrated display could be a pro or a con, depending on how you look at it. In terms of image quality, a display that's often compared to the iMac is the LG Ultrafine 4K, which sells for 700 bucks. So this brings the cost very close to that of the iMac, but there are some other considerations beyond the cost. Now we already mentioned that you may already own a display, but what if you just wanted a bigger display, just something bigger than 24 inches, or maybe you wanna use what you have for now, but then in two years you wanna to upgrade to a 32 inch or even an ultra wide. With the iMac, you're locked into what you have. And with the Mac mini, you have some additional flexibility. Now another consideration is a dual monitor setup. With the iMac, if you bought an extra monitor, Monitor, it's never going to match unless you, I guess, bought another iMac. But with the Mac mini, you can just get two identical monitors and have a setup that works and looks great. Now, this isn't a situation where one approach is better than the other. Some people are gonna say 24 inches, it's plenty, I only need one display, and others will prefer the additional versatility of the Mac Mini. So just keep in mind what's best for your needs. Now, speaking of accessories, the Mac Mini comes with a power cord, and that's it, that's all you get. The iMac comes with a Magic Keyboard and a Magic Mouse. You could also upgrade to the Magic Trackpad. Now, the lower end iMac comes with a basic Magic Keyboard, and then the higher tiered one, the one that I have here, comes with a version that has Touch ID. This is an excellent feature and it's actually also available as an upgrade if you wanted the lower tiered one. Now all the accessories also come in a color that matches your iMac. Now this is another area where you get to choose between convenience and performance. So I absolutely love the integrated Touch ID because it makes authentication so simple and different users can easily log in and out. But I really don't like this keyboard for things like typing it looks great, but there's something about either the shape or the design of the actual keys where I don't find it comfortable and I find that I make way more mistakes on it. Now, of course, I can use a different keyboard. Right now, I'm using the Keychron K3 mechanical keyboard, but that's me having to pay for the same accessory twice since there is no way to get the iMac without paying for the keyboard. Now, I run into the same situation with the Magic Mouse, which personally I don't dislike other than the upside down charging debacle. I really do like some of the functionality that it offers with gestures, but for long-term use, I want a more ergonomic mouse like the Logitech MX Master 3. I already own one, so I could just use it, but otherwise it would be an additional cost, again, for an accessory that I already paid for. Now, the Magic Trackpad is another story altogether. It's awesome. If you've never had a chance to use it, you should definitely give it a shot. It's big, it's responsive, it's accurate, and I have nothing but good things to say about it. Now, regardless of which Mac you get or what accessories you use, 
Today's sponsor can help you keep your Mac running smoothly. Maybe you feel like there are large files hiding on your Mac and using up your valuable space, or maybe you're concerned about malware and protecting your privacy. Clean My Mac X is now available on the Mac App Store. It's safe for your device, and it fully supports the M1 chip on the Mac Mini, the new iMac, and then of course the MacBook Air and Pro. Now, one of the things that I love about Apple products in general is just how easy they are to use. And the same is true for Clean My Mac X. If you're a basic user and you just want to hit one button and have everything taken care of, just hit scan and Clean My Mac X will know exactly where to look and what to look for, all without harming any essential files. You then get a very simple report, hit run to complete the tasks, and you're all set. If you want more granular control, then you can manage cleanup, protection, speed, applications, and files separately still with a super user-friendly interface. If you have a Mac and want faster boot time, more responsive apps, and you want to maximize the space on your hard drive, check out the link in the description. It's a free download and you can try out most of the features. And then if you like it, they have extremely affordable subscriptions or one-time pricing. Now let's get back to the devices and talk about the ports. And keep in mind that both of these are entry-level machines and the target audience isn't professional video editors. The Mac Mini comes with two Thunderbolt slash USB 4 ports, two USB-A ports, an HDMI 2.0 port, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and a gigabit ethernet port. You also have the option of upgrading to a 10 gigabit port for an additional 100 bucks. The iMac comes in two configurations. The lower end one with an eight core CPU and seven core GPU and comes with just two Thunderbolt slash USB 4 ports and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. For an extra 200 bucks, you can get the eight core CPU, eight core GPU version, which adds two USB 3 ports and a gigabit ethernet port built into the power adapter. Now, some of that additional money also goes to the upgraded keyboard, but I'll get to that later on. So as far as IO, you need to think about what kind of user you are and what accessories you'll be adding to your setup. Beyond the type of ports, keep in mind that if you have a hub, dongle, or external SSD attached to the iMac, you'll have cables hanging from the back of the device. The same is true for the Mac Mini, obviously, but since it's sitting flat on your desk, I find that to be a less messy setup. Now, there are some great hub options for both. I use the Satachi Type-C Aluminum Stand-In Hub, which I have right under my Mac Mini, and it gives me an SD and micro SD card readers, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, three USB 3.0 ports, and a USB-C data port. It plugs right into the back of the Mac Mini, and it's a clean and streamlined solution. With the iMac, I use the Satachi Type-C Aluminum Stand Hub, which adds the exact same ports, and this again brings the ports to the front and offers additional functionality without cluttering up my setup. Now, as far as audio systems, there's really no contest. The Mac Mini does have a built-in speaker, but it's really just barely good enough for video calls. You're definitely not gonna wanna use it to watch content or listen to music. Now we of course have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack so you could attach dedicated speakers. And of course you could also do that via Bluetooth. Now the iMac speakers are super impressive considering the form factor. I remember watching the Apple event and wondering if they're gonna sound like laptop speakers. Well, they don't. After my initial test, I was impressed. And then after long-term use, these are definitely good enough to where I don't see a need to add external speakers. Of course, you can get better audio with dedicated speakers, but we use these all the time, even to play music in our living room, and they sound great. Now, moving on to microphone, the Mac Mini doesn't have one, so you'll either need to buy a dedicated microphone or a headset for video calls. The iMac has a three-array microphone that's designed to focus on the speaker and then reduce or attenuate background noise. It's plenty good for video calls, and I'll give you a sample of what it sounds like when you're sitting at a normal distance from your iMac. Here's a quick sample of what the audio is gonna sound like on your iMac. I'm sitting about maybe a foot and a half to two feet away from the display, so this should give you a pretty good idea of what the audio will sound like on a video call. Ultimately, the best audio quality will always come from a dedicated microphone, but of course, that's an added cost. Now, moving on to camera, the Mac Mini, as expected, doesn't have one, and the iMac has a new 1080p or full HD camera. It's better than what we get on the MacBook Air or MacBook Pro. The new image signal processor on the M1 chip helps, and I would classify it as a pretty good webcam. It will definitely work for video calls, and here's a sample so you can get an idea of what you should expect. And here's a sample of what the camera is gonna look like. I'm in a pretty well-lit environment, but to be fair, the lights are coming from the side. 
uh, a little bit from over there and from the back. So it could be pretty challenging for the camera because uh, again, you can see the windows behind me are super bright, but this will give you an idea of what the image quality is gonna look like in a pretty well lit room. What's nice about this camera is that it's integrated right into the iMac versus having to add on some sort of clip on camera with the Mac mini setup. Next, let's talk about performance. Now, essentially we're getting very similar numbers if we're comparing the eight core CPU, eight core GPU versions of both of these devices, because both offer active cooling or a built-in fan. The eight core CPU, seven core GPU version of the iMac has one less GPU core, not a huge deal, and a scale down active cooling system. But this isn't something that will impact the vast majority of the target audience. You could definitely get by with eight gigs of RAM on both devices, but I would upgrade to 16 gigs if you can because the M1 chip will give you plenty of processing power and this device should easily last you for the next five to seven years. As far as internal storage, both start at 256 gigabytes and max out at two terabytes. Now, if you're only browsing the web, consuming content and using web-based applications, you can get by with 256 gigs. If you're doing more than that and need additional space for large apps, then go ahead and upgrade to 512 gigs and then use an external SSD for file storage. I did a test of some of the most popular SSDs on the market. So if you're interested in checking out the performance and getting the best value for your needs, I'll link to that video at the end of this one. Now let's take a look at the configuration and pricing. And I'm gonna go with Apple's pricing, but check the links in the description for better deals. The Mac mini starts at 699 for an eight core CPU, eight core GPU M1 chip with 256 gigs of internal storage and eight gigs of RAM. You can upgrade to 16 gigs of RAM for an additional 200 bucks and move up to 512 gigs of internal storage for 200 bucks, up to one terabyte for 400 bucks or up to two terabytes for an extra 800 bucks. The iMac comes in two M1 configurations. Starting with the base model at 1299, you're getting an M1 chip with an eight core CPU, eight core GPU, two Thunderbolt slash USB 4 ports, and a magic keyboard with no touch ID. But again, you can upgrade the keyboard and the charging brick during checkout. If you move to the higher end model, the one that I have here, then for $14.99, you're getting an extra GPU core, two USB 3 ports, a gigabit ethernet port, which is built right into the charging brick, and you're upgraded to the magic keyboard with touch ID. Ultimately, the choice between the Mac mini and the iMac doesn't come down to performance, but rather to approach and needs. If you want a sleek and compact all-in-one, you don't wanna mess around with picking a monitor, a keyboard, a mouse, a camera, a microphone, and speakers, then the iMac is a great option. If you already own accessories from a previous setup, or you want the versatility of a larger monitor, or even a matching dual display monitor, if you wanna pick your own accessories, so a better keyboard and a more ergonomic mouse, then the Mac mini is a better choice and a great value. Remember that I have links in the description to all the products I talked about. Hopefully this video is helpful. Click on my face to subscribe and then watch one of these videos. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.